Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm working on a fun little project I found on PCBWay. Uh, this is a multi-cart for an Atari 2600. Uh, this particular one uh, is for four kilobyte games and you can put 16 games on this cartridge. Uh, this is a, a, an easy project to do, uh, especially if you're just starting out. You will need a few things. Uh, you're going to need some tools, uh, soldering iron, uh, some solder, uh, an EEPROM uh, reader writer. I'm using this little mini pro here. Uh, we'll set that aside. You're going to need a 27C512 EEPROM, uh, 74LS04, and a four bank dip switch. And in the little bag here, let's uh, take everything out. Uh, this does not come as a kit like this. You you have to outsource everything. Uh, all PCB way does is provides provides these cards. Um, you can get different ones, um, and I'll go over that here in a little bit, but. You're going to need a 100 picofarad or nanofarad capacitor. You're going to need four of these uh, 10K resistors as well. We'll just set these aside. So on the board, it has printed. So you, these spots right here, this is for your uh, 10K resistors. Here's your 100 nanofarad capacitor. 74LS04, and this is for your EEPROM. Uh, right here on the other side is where we'll be putting our dip switch. Uh, you can get these also in for 8K games, and you put eight games on an EEPROM. Uh, there's a few extra parts. You have a lattice chip on here you have to program. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on, on this particular one, which also this uh, one for uh, 16 kilobyte games is, uses the same parts. Just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll do a video on this. But today we're just going to do this one here. All right, so I've got my iron heated up. And uh, first thing that, that I like to do is I'm going to take all of my resistors here and I'm going to just turn the legs down, just like that. I'll do the same with the uh, capacitor. Okay, so when you're uh, when you're doing all of this. You want to you want to put the stuff that's the lowest on the board first. So we're going to start with our our resistors and our capacitor here. So we're just going to put these in, and you can see on this one uh, the direction that I have these resistors. I don't think it matters too much. I've, I've seen other people have them the other way. So, but this is how I'm doing it. So I'm just gonna start putting these on. You just slide them in the holes, just like that. Oh. That one's different. Let's spin it around. There we go. So now I'm just going to turn it over and and we'll uh, get those soldered on there.
All right. Now we're just going to take our uh, little snippers here and snip these legs off. And you can see they're nice and flush there. All right. And those all look pretty good. So next we're going to do our little capacitor here. And it doesn't really matter which way this one particular one is going to go on. We're just going to put those in the hole. Like that. And if, if you're looking at this, you'll notice that at least the ones that I got, they don't go all the way flush. So you just want to put them on something like that. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. Then flip it over and uh, we'll tack that on. Okay. And we'll just take a look. It looks okay. Okay, so next <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna put on our uh, 74 LSO4. So if you look at this, so on this side here, you'll see that uh, little indent right there. You need to match that up with what's on the board. So just gonna set this on there. And it looks like I'm gonna have to uh, squeeze those pins in a little bit. You just gotta push. It doesn't take much. Okay. There we go. So we've got that on, you know, and if you've already made one, you can just match them up. So now we'll flip that over and we'll Okay, so next we need to program our EEPROM. All right, so you know I've got a few thing windows open here. Um, so the first thing before we program it, we need to we need to put our ROM together. So I've got a folder here with 16 four kilobyte games that I'm putting on this particular cartridge, and I've already put them in here and I've numbered them 1 through 16. Uh, this just makes it easier for myself. Uh, you don't have to rename these, uh, but you'll see why here in a minute. And one of the things you want to make sure that they're no, they're no larger than 4 kilobytes. If you have a, a game you want that's 2 kilobytes, you need to copy that game to itself to make it 4 kilobytes. So I have a command here uh, that I use for this particular one. You can see right here, it's a copy B, copy slash B. And then you put your the name of your ROM and then the plus and then the name of your ROM and then the plus and you continue on. And at the end, you'll notice that I've got a space right here. And this is what the name of the file is going to be. So if you're going to type it in. So I've actually created a bat file for this. Um, it works pretty neat. So uh, 
and if you want to pause the screen real quick, uh, you can you can uh, copy that. But basically, I've got everything here, and I'm putting it into a different folder. So and it starts right here, just because I don't want it in with those because I I may change those from time to time. So that's that's my batch file. So right here we're going to do there's my make eprom.bat and then I'm going to hit my enter key. And this particular one has a pop up but I can't move the pop up um, that tells me that it's been completed. So you can see it just it's going to show these, but those commands, you'll see everything. Um, if I go back over here and I go into EEPROM, there's my file. That's what I want to burn to the EEPROM. So I'm going to take my little mini pro programmer here. And let me switch the camera for a second right here. And I'm going to put my EEPROM on it. It, uh, it takes just a few seconds to burn this. Uh, I'm going to go back to the computer screen here. And we're, I've already selected my EEPROM right here. This is a Texas Instrument one. And then we're going to open this up and I'm going to go to uh, this PC and then Atari Multicart EEPROM and then there's my file. I'm going to open that and then I'm going to write it. And this is in real time. It really doesn't take very long, just a few seconds. I know a lot of people fast forward through this. Okay, so a lot of people program this twice. I don't think you really have to, and I've done it just once numerous times, but since this doesn't take very long to program, just program it twice. You do need to make sure these are empty before you start. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to do this. Okay, and that's it. That's it for the computer part. So I'll come back over here and pull my EEPROM out. Set that aside. Now, this is the same thing. You've got the, the little indent right there. And on this EEPROM, right there, you need to make sure those are uh, in the right spot. And we're just going to slide that in there. And let's flip this over. And my iron is still hot. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just uh, solder these on. too bad. So now we can uh, put our dip switch on. So you can put this on upside down. Um, I like to have them right side up. We're just, but you'll notice that, so you don't have to put a dip switch in here. You can put a little 
two pin posts here and use jumpers. Uh, they're even cheaper if you want to go that route. But there's another set of holes right here specifically so you can use dip switches. So you just line those up like that. And if you can see, I've got that right side up. And now I can flip this over. I like to grab the pins while I'm doing it. And I think I'll just grab this fiberglass pencil here just to make it level. And then we just got to solder this in. And that's it. So you just want to inspect it, you know, make sure everything works. So this is this is how you uh, change games uh, by moving these switches around. Uh, You'll want to get a piece of tape to put over over this window. Um, this is this one here. I've got socketed, but uh, I do have some labels that I will that I've already made up. And here we go. Just happen to have them handy. So now I printed these on a label maker. Uh, label makers are cheap so we'll just stick this on here like this and there you go you can see uh, it says this side faces back of the Atari so this dip switch is going to be facing you in the Atari now this does not work on a Retron 77. I have confirmed it. It works on all of the Atari 2600s. It works on the 7800. It even works on the Coleco Gemini. Um, the Gemini is what I use most of the time uh, just because the video happens to be better. But uh, that's the whole cart. That's the whole project. All you gotta do is go uh, put it in your Atari and start playing.